All right, so do you want to introduce yourself first? Introduce myself? Yes. Uh, okay, I am... <laughs> 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 Sorry, she's just, she's got some vampire teeth candy and she's just eating other candy with the vampire oh, teeth. Okay, cute. I thought you had forgotten who you are. No, no, no. That was, uh, she's over there going, yum, yum, yum. <laughs> An idiot. Uh, okay, I am Jonathan Perry and I originate from England. Uh, I am 41, so beat your nearly 30 by a lot. Uh, and I'm a trained teacher, so all I've ever wanted to do is teach, and I uh, prefer younger ones, so grade one to three was my specialism, and my second half of my degree was in music, so a little known fact is I can basically play anything that involves my mouth. Then after my degree, I just went into teaching and, and kind of stopped the music side. So I express myself through other art forms like painting and poetry. And I'm pushing everything I can with art into my little lady, who is now five. And her name is Misha. So you read the book in one sitting. I think you're yeah. by far the fastest reader that I have so far. <laughs> Uh, well, actually, because you gave me a list of questions that I didn't know how to answer, I read it again last night, so I've actually read it twice. What was your first impression of the book? My first impression of the book? Um, I didn't really know what to expect because I didn't actually know what the book contained. Like, I knew that you said that it was about your people, but... Uh, I didn't know what that meant. Like we had that little sitting on Google Maps and had a look at your place. And when when like I said that I come from a really rural place uh, that we call a village and then you were like, oh, I come from like a small town and it's really rural, too. I think the contrast between my village and your village is drastic. Yes, <laughs> like, your village like is, is pretty developed. When I saw that, I was like, we wouldn't call that a village in South Africa, we would call that a township. Yeah, so that, like, I, like, I come from a place that is very small, probably nearly a thousand people there. And yeah. it's very compact, but it's very busy. Like we've got a shop and we've got a post office and we've got a garage. So it's got everything that you need. Right. But like looking at your place, it's all spread out and like nothing. And then you you showed me the... The, the petrol the station. <laughs> and it's not a petrol station at all. It's like a shack with a pump. <laughs> so <laughs> like I yeah. think... I think that was eye opening for me. And then that kind of led into a first impression of what the book would be like. But again, I think you've opening and reading the book, you've kind of not done. Oh, I don't know how to say it. you've not really written about your people. It's more about a struggle of a person that comes from a different place. And then you've looked at different struggles that people might encounter. But it's very much more about Taiwan and being an alien yeah. in Taiwan and it is I, I un yeah I understand why you struggle to connect um my my social media posts to the book that had nothing to do with the actual contents in the book that was just like being grateful of the people around me you know um because I said the same thing when you when you rescued me when I was stuck at the airport and you, you helped me out and then I said like it took a whole village to get me here so for me my village are the people that are around me that you know I see often you want to know my favorite passage yeah uh it is the part when it's possibly one of the only surprises I had in the book as well. Like your, your writing leads you along the path of the person. So I think you can understand the person quite well. Um, but it is the, it's the little inserted story about Benjamin. And then uh, it is your description of the gates of heaven. But it's not the gates of heaven that I like. It's your description of the the dark, lonely chasm that is next door. And I thought it was very clever that, like you, 
you obviously have the idea that heaven is somewhere that people go and then you've got to prove your worth which is i suppose what everybody always teaches about heaven um but then you've you've got it that the people that are outside wanting to go in are terrified and screaming and like it's not specifically stated that that is hell but it's like the fall towards there's a deep gap and then it's full of fire and the people around it are screaming and scared and then he goes and has a conversation now it's not only the description that makes it really nice but the idea that he's basically in theory although he hasn't done it himself has committed suicide and then it's kind of like a punishment to be left there wondering about where he's going to be for a little while before he's told it's not your time you need to go back thanks <laughs> uh, you need to go back because your time is not done and then he gets sent back so i like that section <laughs> i did not think you would like that section because you know you and i tried talking about religion but it was just it was like on the surface and then it's something that we never really talked about so i thought that you were just going to refute that is, is refute the right word you're just going to yeah. like overlook that and go like oh bullocks and then whatever you say <laughs> and well, then and then just say, yeah. <laughs> um no i think i think the reason that i like it is because it's for lack of a better word it's kind of raw like the rest of it you've thought through and then you've developed and like you can see the sections in your writing when you've gone back and then you've kind of like edited the vocabulary to make it more poignant but i don't think you edited that story i think that story is just very naturally worded and put out how you're envis envisaging it in your head and then that is how you feel and i kind of like that cuz uh oh. <laughs> i kind of like that because it's kind of like you want to go to the high place that is a beautiful garden and then it's the high walls and then everybody's wearing white and then there's the other side of that that's right outside on the doorstep of darkness and death and despair and then maybe you're you're kind of like not knowing if you are able to go straight to heaven or hell because you're in that dark place and maybe that's why you've written it like that yeah is what i think <laughs> So I think that works very well as the lesson. I think that the build up to get there is maybe not so needed, but the lesson itself is re really great. Yeah. And please bear in mind anybody that's reading it that's only a little bit story that's being told to somebody else. So it's not even <laughs> Yeah, not even a main character. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well thanks for that. And it's amazing to me that you interpreted the man outside the gates as an angel because um, that's one of the things that I wanted to leave out to my readers to interpret the characters and the stories however they wanted to you know, come up, come up, come to their own conclusions and stuff. And I'm sure you've noticed that I did not give too much detail in terms of describing the physical appearances of the characters and 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 all of that. Okay, so um, I want to talk about the cave girl. The cave girl. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. you're a man reading a story about a girl who's, who gets disappointed by a boy how like how did you take that I took it if I'm honest uh as too short <laughs> yes that is true yeah I thought it it kind of started and then started to develop and then was lost to me it was too quick uh what I would say is that like uh the way that it's put in the um she's hidden in a cave and then she wants to go out and explore but she's scared of the outside um and then from that she needs a man to come and guide her to the outside uh i think isn't strong enough for you because being a strong black woman like you you can go out and explore yourself you have you're in taiwan you've already come out to explore but the story is not about me I know it's not about you but it is. Uh I know that it isn't about you but it has to have some of you within it for you to be able to write it. 
Because I write poetry, I get that everything on that page is straight from me. So it has to have some of you in it. Um, I would say that, oh, I don't know, like she doesn't need to hide in the cave, but I can understand hiding in the cave because I hide in my cave, that's my classroom. Yeah. Um, I understand um, the fear of being out and alone and I understand, I mean, I can understand every part of her, even from a man's perspective, but I am quite girly, so. So like, I think the way that you've written it, like um, even the experience of going to the surgery and then sitting there with people that maybe don't speak English and then uh, the receptionist that doesn't really know how to interact with you and then the surprise upon the psychiatrist's face or um, uh, I've had therapy here for like three years and my I've got a counselor that is from Germany and but she is Taiwanese so she's like completely trilingual with German and English and uh, Chinese but she she is not a psychiatrist. She's definitely just a counselor and she's there and interacts with me on the level of an English speaker that is trained within that. Um, and then I have a psychiatric doctor who does only speak to me in English, but his expression is very robotic and very difficult to like make a connection to. So I've got one side is medicine and one side is mind and soul is the way that I would put it but the receptionists is very much the experience that you get and then the almost borderline excitement to have somebody different within the surgery is all also there and a part of weirdness so like I think you get the uncomfortable nature of it and um, you also get the caring touch of the fact that you've gone uh he doesn't want to speak and he's struggling to speak so the lady cancels the next appointment and gives him all the time that he needs is something that would occur so like i don't know how much you can imagine that situation having not been through it yeah oh, it's, oh, oh. hey you took me to agreeing that i've been in therapy okay yeah, yeah i get you <laughs> <laughs> i get that and um it, it, it's so easy for us as foreigners here to victimize ourselves. Now I tell the story about, you know, what the Taiwanese ladies have been through. Um, did you, did you resonate with that? Uh, the lady that she canceled the appointment for? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tina, Tina and, and Layla, and then there's Mrs. Chen as well. Yeah, I would say that, uh, like even conversing with my counselor, she will tell stories of other people in not similar situations because a lot of my therapy has been about uh, culture shock and communication troubles. Um, but like she will still talk about the fact that there are people in a similar situation if you have a regular appointment, like my appointment was always on a Thursday afternoon, so I didn't know them per se, but I knew the person that was in the room before me and I knew the person that was in the room after me. So like you get to know the regulars and uh, being somebody that absorbs information from everywhere, I'd start to link into uh, when the counselor said, oh, she was having a tough time. So I had to give her another 20 minutes and that's fine. I didn't mind ever, but you start to learn their story a little bit. So yeah, you certainly do, you start to develop an understanding of the people that also go there that aren't even Western. So I think, yes, I did resonate with it. And you can also have the thing that I've had the conversation with my counselor of, oh, this person needs more time. Can we possibly reschedule for next week? And I was like, yeah, sure. Because I've been very low and I get that if somebody is very low that they'll need one instant time. help yeah. instead of delayed response right the interest kind of started in a chance meeting and then she was very attracted to her skin color i think in taiwan the denial of black skin is still very much there 
uh, like my experience as a white person is going to be very different to your experience within the country because even within places like our school which is dangerous territory to talk about on a youtube channel but even places like our school and even at our old school hess then that they've got they still have a management problem with trying to sell somebody black and like it's disgusting and it's hurtful to anybody that is incorporated in that bracket um no i will never be denied a job application if i apply somewhere i'm going to be given an interview if i am in a social situation yes people will still look at me and think i am the typical white guy and that i'm going to be sleeping my way through taiwan but that's a different form of stereotyped abuse than what you would encounter and the nice thing about that part of the story is that he didn't encounter that and maybe even like her having that attraction and then even her friends being involved in the understanding that there was an attraction was very nice because it's not like it might be more so now that that would be available to somebody here of color but i don't know if it would so wait 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 rosa is rosa has her hair pulled so Rosa, yes so rosa was wearing a wig right <laughs> i didn't i never understood why the woman went mental and i assumed that that was about you and another person that lives just down the road from you in the school no. has nosy been pulling your hair <laughs> no she's my friend she wouldn't do that <laughs> i actually really appreciated the way that you went into such depth about rosa's hair again talking from somebody that might be coming from experience of all of that uh i don't know how you can pull out cornrows in the toilet but i appreciated the the rawness of her hiding in the toilet and then the two children that you went into depth with or the third as well because the third was the smart one that didn't ever actually get included in emotion um okay but they are very they i can understand the stereotypes that you've used so they are very much apparent here um it's still i still read it like it was our school though because yeah. the way that you ran out and there was nobody else in the classroom i've never encountered that in another school so i think that felt like here and then having somebody very close by that felt like they could be the other per the other teacher in the story yeah <laughs> um but i don't know i don't know how much pulling on hair extensions would do anything because not been there not done that uh, you have not sure no idea <laughs> <laughs> not yeah. sure how you'd extract uh extract cornrows and then put them up in like a bob to be quite honest um i've also been through um a little bit of what the cave girl has been through and and what i said before was that what i decided to do when i was going through that moment is actually take the cave girl and put her in a cave and then i just continued living my life you know so yes i've been through heartbreak and you know half of that um yes um and 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 going through that and writing about her i just that's when i realized that girls also have caves because i could have decided to shut myself off at that time it sounded all too good to be true but benjamin was too eager without wasting any time he swallowed the pills and set out a few hours later when he was almost near high mountain the magic pills exploded in his tummy unexpectedly and benjamin collapsed on the side of the road when benjamin opened his eyes he realized he was in a different place he was hovering over a dark lonely chasm the man in a white garment turned to him and said it is not time benjamin go back home love your family and friends stay away from bad friends help the needy and live a good life i think that's basically it